Here and then down, down the front. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, my name is Claudio Ruiz, uh, and I'm from uh, an NGO uh, from Chile called Derechos Digitales. And um, I would like to support what Burzu had recently said, because uh, one of the things that I wanted to share was actually about the TPP. Not because I'm obsessed with it, uh, which I am, uh, but especially because when we are talking about multi-stakeholderism and when we are talking about internet regulation and such, uh, we need to have our feet on the ground. And what is happening right now, at these days, is there's a couple of people discussing about important things about the copyright in the f into the future of the internet in a secrecy way, with no transparency, and with using the word uh, multi-stakeholderism or whatever, or transparency, in the way that Burzu has said. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's kind of dangerous for me to just having this kind of support about the multi-stakeholderism even if we don't have a very clear idea about what we talk about when, you're, when we're talking about multi-stakeholderism. This is what Paolo think, uh, mentioned uh, at, the, at the beginning. So this is my first point. And the second thing is, uh, well, we are talking about pr uh, procedures here uh, in some part, but I think it's important to, to just think a little bit about what is wrong with the copyright procedures today. And therefore, I think it's quite important to think critically about what is, has been happening in the last hundred years about the, how the copyright policies are made. Uh, therefore, to think a little bit more about what the copyright of the future should shape, uh, taking into account procedures like multi-stakeholderism, for instance, or taking into account what is happening on the reality and what is happening when the internet it becomes something important and it becomes an change a lot, a lot of the practices that we uh, haven't had in the past. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Sonny Gitwekbe from Nigeria. I think the major solution to all the stuff we are saying is global governance. This is a process whereby we promote equality among nations. That is the only solution. Because when you promote equality among nations, human rights, transboundary legal processes and policies will be resolved. What works in another country should be able to be guaranteed in another country. Currently, we do not respect bilateral, neither multilateral agreements. You see nations going into bilateral agreements. At the end of the day, the other one takes advantage. So why not we set up a global governance system? Because the Internet of Things has globalized us. Thank you. So I think uh, we could ask the panelists if they heard anything they like <laughs> or anything they want to throw back to the room. Um, Nick? Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, very quickly, to, and I will try to cover as many uh, of the interventions as possible. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't really rush to disregard what's happening here uh, and what's been happening over the past eight years in terms of uh, discussions. I, I believe that... We really need to continue these discussions. The IGF might not be having any decision-making power, but it certainly has the power to be shaping decisions. And I would hope that people are taking those ideas that they hear in this space and they take them back uh, and transform them into tangible outcomes. Uh, I am very glad you've mentioned the, the Canadian uh, experience. It has been a very interesting experience. The same more or less experience, not to the same degree, has been happening in South Africa. For me, the question is how we take those national now experiences and we transform them into uh, international normative lawmaking. Uh, and this is why we really need to, and this has been allowed because of the internet, we really need to start looking at those best practices, if you want, and start seeing whether we can actually incorporate them. Some of them will not be able to do uh, so, but uh, for others, we will certainly be able to take and at least try to adapt them within the international uh, scene. And lastly, on the issue of the TPP, which is a bigger issue relating to uh, free trade agreements, this is a very, very tricky area. I mean, free trade agreements, well, 
trade negotiators, uh, negotiators are not doing really anything differently than they were, than they were doing 20 years ago. Uh, FTAs were always conducted behind closed doors and suddenly just because be we are talking about the internet we cannot automatically just clap and open it up uh, and this is uh, possibly if you want one of the trickiest parts of copyright policy making uh, ACTA failed because of that and the, the TTIP, the negotiators before the, the negotiations started, promised at least uh, to the European citizens that these discussions uh, will be open to the extent that information would be shared. Uh, so far, of course, the negotiations have not progressed that much, but so far, to the extent that they have become more transparent, yes, there is more improv uh, information provided, but again, that information is not enough, a lot of people are depending on leaked texts, and in an age of information, we should not be really depending on leaked texts. I mean, those texts should become available uh, to people because those texts keep on changing all the time. So uh, in the context of FTAs, we really, really need to try to find a way to insert the notion of inclusion uh, in a more concrete way. Uh, and it's going to take, again, time. It has taken time in other fora, I'm sure, uh, even within WIPO. Uh, but uh, I, I will tend to agree with the interventions that multi-stakeholderism is not really manifested through FTAs. And if we, if we really pay attention to what's happening, and I, I, as I said, Nelly Cruz actually said about ACTA, it was a waking up call. Uh, it, it, we suddenly realized that we cannot be doing business the way we used to do in Europe. Uh, uh, so this message possibly needs to be taken and become more global, especially as we see multilateral uh, free trade agreements uh, emerging and intellectual property issues being part of those agreements. Uh, well, just a few things struck me. Um, as an industry person, um, I've been bemused by the, uh, uh, how much I feel similarly about the trade question to public interest groups, because uh, I don't know of anyone in industry who actually finds the level of secrecy of trade talks uh, anything but frustrating, ironically enough. Um, I, I actually get more leaked information about negotiations I follow from public interest groups than I do from the countries themselves. Uh, which is very funny considering that I, uh, there's, a, there's a major trade talk going on in Geneva, the Trade and Services Agreement. I see all those countries regularly, and, and they're all afraid to, to give, give the documents out because some other negotiator on another country will, will get mad at them. Um, but, uh, so I, I think this, this, is, this is an area of international policy along with peace and security policy that is very secretive, and there is increasingly a demand that both should be more open. And, and I think that demand will be answered. You, you, you saw in, in, in ACTA that, it, that it, it caused the failure of, a, of an agreement. Uh, I think the countries are very aware of the fact that they can't keep going as they are. There are some countries who are more willing to change than others, um, but I think they all rec recognize that they must change. They just haven't found a way to balance everything out yet. So uh, I think we all have to push, and, and I think there's actually a common interest. I think there's a lot of industry who, who are just as interested in improvements as, as, uh, the, uh, as the NGO community is. Um, on the, the question of equality of, of states, um, I think right now we have a situation in which all states have one vote in UN, the UN system, but that is not an equal vote. Um, I think we should think more about equity of participants than than votes or equality. Um, because I think if, the, if we have systems of, of decision making which people see as equitable, as producing equity, that will be more durable. And that seems to me to be what is missing in a lot of fora is. The, all, all across the board, I think many communities see they're, they're not equitably represented. Um, or, or feel unrepresented entirely. That, I think that's really the challenge. Um, I, I, I should note that while we're talking about the status of the IGF as a negotiating forum, uh, 
the World Summit on the Information Society's 10-year review is, of course, in 2015. And today, in the second committee of the UN General Assembly in New York, they are talking about what the review should look like. So by the time we leave here, maybe, uh, we may actually know more about where, what direction WISIS is heading in and, and therefore all the, also the IGF. Thanks, Nick. I'm just mindful of time. Um, Paolo and um, Giacomo, if you could, if you'd like to reflect on any of what was just discussed, and then let's take a really quick, like, one-minute summary, closing remarks from the panel. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll have time to get to the remote, remote questions. Um, Okay, very briefly. I was going to comment on most of the, the issues raises, raised, but we don't have time. So, very, very briefly, uh, the problem, for instance, of uh, the problem of representation, the disruptiveness of some kind, certain kind of lobbying, the lack of a de clear definition or a commonly agreed definition of multi stakeholderism. This is definitely the first step if we want to build something on top of it. How would that work? Would that work on the basis of consensus? like uh, in a member state driven process. So the first comment would be that. And uh, secondly, uh, I, I wanted, to, it was going to probably be my first initial remark. I described the situation from uh, the multilateral setting of a United Nations agency. I was not describing the overall setting of the international um, copyright system. So from the WIPO perspective, uh, looking to plurilateral and bilateral agreement, we are a member states driven organization. M member states set our agenda. So you, in our forum, uh, if you look at what WIPO is currently doing on a day-to-day -day basis, is actually working towards striking a balance with the copyright system. You can look at the standing committee on copyright and related rights agenda, we have two items on limitation and exceptions, one for libraries and archives, and the other one for education and research institution. And uh, on the side, we have the development agenda. And we are tackling all these issues that Giacomo just raised, the public domain, new licensing schemes, the public sector information, open source, education and research. And I personally devote most of my working time on those issues. But again, this is not because my boss asked me to do that, but because member states set our agenda. So I think there is a, a tendency that can be spotted towards the need to strike the balance. And it's clearly, it's not my impression, it's clearly uh, under lights. It's, it's there, it's uh, in, in, uh, in the agenda of the committees, in, it's in the activities that we are uh, delivering. Um, so I let me end up by agreeing that uh, the question of um, the public domain, new li open licensing, and how we, we reconcile those two great uh, difference, different positions is, uh, is one of the major challenges uh, that we are going to face at the international level. Thank you. Finally, I got an answer. Uh, what I can add to and after this, all this discussion is that I'm still convinced that um, the proper place where to discuss of, uh, copyright issues and intellectual property issues is mainly the WIPO because the, the, the expertise is there. While in the fr uh, free trade agreement um, uh, table of negotiation, the priorities are others and you exchange sometimes the um, because of the expected results, you, you, you step on a, a certain number of uh, prerogatives that are proper to uh, the arena where the copyright could be debated. So I think I am suspicious of every kind of uh, debate where the main goal is another one, and then this uh, simply forget all the rest of the, uh, um, of the needs, because it's a very delicate ecosystem when we talk about copyrights, because we have too many rights to be contemporary at the same time. Um, a part of that, we all expect that the WSAS 10 will be uh, an innovative process. We will see if there will be any of that. If not, I think that um, the, the vacuum cannot stand in nature for so long. Uh, something will happen because the, the, the situation is stagging for so long, and I think that uh, 
um, there will be another way to organize the finger to try to solve the, to try to find the solution and of course the, the identification of best practices has been mentioned by many people here in the room uh, is one of the, the path that we have to follow and to cooperate actively in order to extend the best practices all over our work daily. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're going to go very quickly <laughs> um, with just kind of some final um, thoughts, closing remarks. Um, please limit your intervention to about a minute, and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll wrap up. Thanks. So extremely quickly. Uh, I believe that all of us sitting here and elsewhere having these same discussions are operating under one common value. And that common value I really do hope is to sustain the open uh, and interoperable internet. So on that basis, I don't think that we are, uh, if, we ha if we share that value, we are not that, further apart, uh, that far apart. So I would really like to finish with just one thing. Multi-stakeholderism is actually, uh, and I know I, I also hate the isms at the end, but it is actually working because there are no winners or losers. It's all about compromise. And l by the time we start compromising, then we will get to the solutions that we want to get. So the message that I would like to leave here is compromise, compromise, compromise. Thank you, Constantinos. Well, my message uh, would be the, the same of, the, of uh, the opening remarks, that multilateralism is actually not an alternative to multilateralism, and uh, multi-stakeholder, yes, multilateralism is not a stakeholder no, to multi-stakeholderism, and multi-stakeholderism is a pillar for successful policy making. And uh, this is happening, and it can be improved. Of yield. No, you, I, I just can repeat what I said before. We think that we have to identify best practice and work around that and try to extend this best practice to try to give uh, the most appropriate solution to the main problem. I think that if we are able to deliver a treaty that will define what public domain is, this will already solve a lot of problems from the field and then we can concentrate on the rest of the other issues. Thank you so much, and thank you, um, thank you, panelists, and thank you to everyone who's attended this session. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, while I think Internet and Zed and IFLA are listed as the organizers, um, we all chipped in in organizing the session, um, and I just want to thank all the organizations that are represented here. Um, for, for contributing to the, f to the formation of the session. Um, also, uh, if, if I'm, I'm sorry we don't have more discussion um, today with the floor, but I think that we, well, we will be developing kind of a, a report, a summation um, of, of what happened here today. Um, if you are interested in following the discussion, please give me your business card. And, or otherwise, um, you can send, um, send me a tweet at Susan underscore Chalmers, C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S. And just let me know if you, you'd be keen to receive that report um, so we can continue, continue the discussion. And with, with that said, um, everybody have a lovely day and enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much. <laughs>